Today I'm turning on this Solar Edge 6000 watt inverter for the very first time. I've got 30 solar panels installed on the roof, each one connected to a Solar Edge DC power optimizer. And I've got two pairs of PV wire coming down a conduit running into the house. Goes down to the wall. And I've got my DC disconnect switch right here. So we're going to turn this on. And before we fire it up, let's open up the covers and take a look at uh, how it's wired up inside. Here's the bottom cover. I've loosened all four of these bolts. And the cover comes right off. Here's the DC lines. That's the two pairs coming in. And those connect up right there. One pair of 15 is right there. The other string of 15 right there. Then on this side, this is the 240 side with our line out neutral and chassis ground. I've removed one string pair from the terminals and I'm going to take a voltage reading on these two wires to show that the neat thing about using the DC power optimizers on each panel is that the power optimizers will maintain a safe voltage on these two leads while the system is off. These two wires are connected right now to 15 panels and DC power optimizers in series and each power optimizer is producing one volt. When we take a voltage reading we should see 15 volts on here each volt representing a solar panel in series. And here's what it looks like with the top cover removed. If we take a close look at this center display section, right here you can see the uh, LCD display which shows through a window in the front cover. Here we have a battery. Right up here on the top is the slot where we'll insert an SD card in just a moment. And then right here we have four buttons, Escape, 1, 2, and 3, which are used for the setup. Here's the instructions which come in the box with the inverter and included in this right here is the um, SD card which you uh, will use for activating the software. Right on the front cover are the instructions for activating the inverter which is to verify that the serial number on the SD card matches the serial number of the inverter. Then you insert the card into the SD slot, turn on the AC switch on the inverter if it's working fine, it will say running script and then done. So now we're going to go to chapter five, commissioning the installation, which pretty much tells us those instructions again, except uh, on this one, it says go to your breaker box and go ahead and turn on the breaker that is feeding the inverter. I put the lower cover back onto the inverter the DC disconnect switch is off. Now I'm turning on the breaker that's connected to the inverter. When I turned on the breaker, the LCD display illuminated and here's what it says. The serial numbers match, so I'm getting ready to insert the SD card for activation. All right, that's great. Activation complete. Now, if it came up with an error, there is a way of activating the software by manually entering the serial number of the unit. I had to do it once and it did work.
the DC disconnect switch is on. Okay, this is now showing me when I push this little display light button down here, that eliminates the display and is showing me that my AC line voltage is 247 volts. I have 16 volts, which is on the DC. I would have expected 15 since there's 15 in series, but I guess it's close. And then of course the unit's off and I'm not producing any wattage right now. The backlit LCD display times out after a number of seconds and goes dark. So to re-illuminate that, you can push this button here and that re-illuminates the LD LCD display. And then if you push that same button again, now that it's illuminated, it will page through the different information screens. This one's showing that we produced no kilowatt hours. On this screen, we want to verify that the proper country code is in the inverter in this case, USA. Continuing through the different information screens, we eventually come back to the home screen. Note that the inverter is still off. So in this case, I have the proper country code illuminated for me so I could now put the cover back on and proceed to the pairing menu, which would pair the DC power optimizers. If I wanted to change the country code, I can do that by entering the setup menu and the setup menu you get to by using these buttons right here. Now in my case, I don't need to do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to show you how it's done. So according to the instructions, we're to press the enter button and hold it for five seconds. There's no button here labeled enter, but there's one that says ESC or escape. So I'm going to press and hold that for five seconds. So pressing and holding the escape button for five seconds didn't do anything. So I see here over on the number three button, it kind of has the old fashioned symbol for carriage return. So maybe that's what they mean by enter. So now I'm going to press and hold this number three button for five seconds. And it says, enter the password. The password is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So I'm going to enter that now. And now we're in the setup menu. So let's try the, uh, country menu. Let's enter on this. And here it says we could uh, switch over to a couple of different settings. We're currently set up for USA, but if we wanted to switch to Hawaii, we could do that. And I believe what happens in Hawaii is there's uh, slightly looser tolerances for frequency and voltage. To back up in the menu, I can press escape. And then to exit set up altogether, I can press escape one more time. And now I'm back to the regular display. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on and we'll proceed to pair the DC power optimizers. The covers are all back on the unit again. We're getting ready to pair the DC optimizers. Our DC switch is on. The inverter unit switch is off. I'll push the button to illuminate the display. And now to begin the pairing sequence, I'm going to push this green display button for 10 seconds. Beginning now. Continue to hold it. It says pairing initialization. And all I have to do is within five seconds, switch this to on and now switches to pairing and process and it begins a countdown. The pairing operation is continuing to count down at 30 seconds remaining. Our DC switch is on. Our unit switch is on. 
and we're counting down with 15 seconds remaining. Now it's beginning a waking up sequence, counting down from 280 seconds. All right, we're getting ready to come out of the wake up sequence. Waking up would occur normally right when the sun is first coming up. All right, we're looking at the POK sequence, and right now it sees 26 out of 27 units. There are actually 30, so it hasn't successfully communicated with three of the optimizers yet. Power production's coming up. And in the late day sun, it looks like we're leveling off at about uh, 3,400 watts. So in my experience, what will happen is that over the next hour, the unit will continue to pull the different power optimizers and will eventually communicate with all 30. And you can see that just in the moment while I was just speaking, it did successfully communicate with one more power optimizer. And we're up to 28. So now we only have two that are MIA. And I have every expectation that those two will come up in the next several minutes. With about one more minute going by, we're now at 29 units. And about one minute later, we have all 30 modules communicating. So it's receiving good communications from 30 out of 30 modules. If we look at the main display over here on the right, you can see power production is underway. And then the middle line is module communication. Every time that illuminates, it means it's receiving a module communication from one of the 30 modules. And those send a communication at random intervals. And every time one is picked up, that light flashes. Each module has um, a random period programmed into it so that they send their communications all at different times. And just by chance, they don't speak over each other. Each module has a different interval between its bursts of communications. All right, so now we're gonna turn the uh, inverter unit off. And it says DC voltage not safe, do not disconnect, and it gives us a readout Earlier, you remember those two wires that I was uh, had my fingers dangerously close to. And the reason I did that was there was only 15 volts on it. If I did that right now, that would be very unsafe as uh, you can see the voltage is quite high. So, but now that uh, the unit is off, it's actually now bleeding down its internal capacitors inside. Once the DC voltage falls below about 50 volts, the warning goes away. It brings us back to this screen. You can still see the DC voltage now settling down to around 15 volts. And of course on the AC side, we still have our line voltage of 240 volts or so. So that's it. That completes the uh, the initialization of the inverter, and it is now, uh, we can turn it on now and run it.